thanks uh, um, everybody uh, and thanks to be here again uh, sorry for the the problem uh, I will just summarize a bit what uh, I was saying so uh, I just introduced myself I'm Berta Shanti I'm project uh, dissemination manager for the across project um, unfortunately uh, my colleague uh, Olivier Terzo that is uh, actually the coordinator uh, wasn't able to be to attend uh, the webinar so uh, it's my pleasure my honor to uh, to give you some uh, some information about uh, what we are doing in uh, in across um, the agenda for today uh, unfortunately uh, we had uh, we should add uh, time for for, uh, for that uh, was we'll split uh, the my the idea was to split the talk in two parts the first one uh, related to uh, to give you a project overview so uh, basically, which are the industrial societal challenges uh, that we, from which we started the, uh, working on the, uh, devising the uh, the solutions, technical solutions, um, which are the project goals, uh, uh, partners who that are involved in the, the projects, um, give you some uh, overview of the uh, software stack that we are, um, but not only software. But um, most of the part is uh, software, uh, so the, the stack we are uh, working on and uh, uh, developing, and some um, basic uh, um, idea of which are the, the pilots use cases. And second part is more devoted to technological present technological aspect of the of the um, solution we are uh, we are working on. Uh, so, which are the system puzzle requirements we started uh, considering and we are trying to uh, fulfilling uh, the orchestration architecture we, um, we uh, came out um, with and technological, specific technological uh, solution we are uh, working on and actually we are developing. Um, so, Let's start with the first part of the talk. So project overview. Um, um, so we started from considering some challenges. Um, most of them are kind of industrial challenges that we uh, considered. Uh, and that comes from uh, came from uh, uh, also from uh, some of the partners that are involved in our project, um, uh, which are industrial uh, uh, industrial uh, big industrial companies. Um, and the main one uh, is uh, uh, can be summarized uh, uh, also in the in the title of this slide. Um, since we are trying to. Uh, to, to take the, the challenge of creating a um, stack. Um, so I'm not just saying uh, software because it uh, can be uh, partially software, but uh, also involving uh, hardware development, code design. Um, a stack that is able to make uh, really uh, convergent the HPC world, big data, and uh, AI, uh, which, are, uh, which were uh, up to now uh, basically, um, uh, can, they can could be seen as uh, vertical silos. So uh, each of them with their specific um, technological uh, tools, uh, infrastructures, uh, with specific uh, each of them with some specific uh, requirements that are not uh, uh, the same uh, for for the others. Um, and this challenge comes from the fact that uh, uh, applications are becoming complex. And when we say complex, uh, basically, we, uh, we, uh, we mean basically that uh, the, the application workflows are trying to combine uh, these three words uh, in, uh, in a single, let's say, uh, application uh, uh, that should run on a, on a computing system. Um, other challenges are related to this idea. Uh, basically, are the uh, 
making uh, uh, more easier for uh, um, industrial uh, partners, let's say industrial stakeholders, to uh, get access to large computational resources, uh, which should be tailored for covering uh, uh, all these free uh, free uh, domains, and also try to make uh, uh, easier to test uh, modern, maybe some case uh, um, very uh, very new technologies, as I will try to show you uh, later. Uh, so. Of course, try to uh, catch up all these um, uh, challenges and try to um, uh, harmonize uh, a set of uh, software and also um, sometimes hardware technologies that try to uh, to make uh, to actually realize uh, what I said a uh, few 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 minutes ago. So um, a stack. Uh, that is able to make uh, the usage of uh, HPC, Big Data, and the AI framework uh, inside the same application uh, smoothed uh, with respect to, to the past. And so um, enabling the, the user to, um, to run the workflows on uh, the heterogeneous workflows on uh, uh, such kind of uh, 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 system. Consider also uh, the ability to get access in an easy way to a heterogeneous accelerator. So in our case, uh, as I will um, explain uh, uh, later, we are thinking, uh, for example, to how to integrate uh, neuromorphic, uh, neuromorphic uh, uh, devices. Um, the across project goals can be summarized in this sense uh, uh, the ballots are, are showing you now so um, we want to create a, such a um, uh, stack uh, in, a, in a way that uh, it will be ready for exascale uh, uh, exascale machines that are uh, uh, coming um, we want to support uh, uh, in a smooth uh, uh, manner the execution of uh, uh, heterogeneous workflows. Uh, where for heterogeneous workflows, uh, I mean uh, workflows that mix this this free um, uh, task coming from this free main domain. So HPC, pure uh, let me say pure numerical simulations, um, HPD a task. Um, some uh, some training phase for a, a neural network and so on and so forth. Um, leveraging as much as possible on uh, uh, heterogeneous hardware, so uh, GPUs, FPGAs, uh, and we are uh, also looking uh, at how to uh, integrate uh, more uh, exotic uh, stuff like uh, neuromorphic uh, devices. And we want to also to consider um, the um, uh, the introduction of a, a new smart way of allocating uh, resources in the in such uh, such uh, such system. So uh, looking at how to uh, make possible to to reserve. Um, uh, computing the resources in a smart way and how to schedule uh, the workloads uh, on the acquired resources. And for doing that, we, um, we considered three main uh, pilots, um, actually three main domains, I mean, two three main domains, so aeronautics, um, uh, weather and climate forecasting, um, more connected to smart farming um, and water management and energy carbon sequestration uh, um, use cases. Um, the project uh, was funded uh, under the LHPC JU um, framework. So basically we got a fund, an overall funding of uh, uh, 8.8 8 million of euros. Uh, 
more or less a uh, half of this uh, funding comes from our EU contribution. The other one uh, comes from our, uh, national um, partners contribution. So each partner can, country um, uh, partner um, provided uh, a contribution uh, to the project. And the, as you can see, the, um, uh, the, the, the partners that are uh, in the project are quite uh, um, well distributed in Europe. I mean, we have uh, um, many, um, many countries covering uh, uh, Germany, uh, Netherlands, uh, Czech Republic, France, Italy, Greece, and Norway. Um, inside this uh, consortium, we have two main supercomputing centers, which are the our, um, our back for the, providing infrastructural resources, CINEC and IT for innovations. We have uh, uh, also an additional, um, we call it research infrastructure uh, provided by Atos. Um, you have two large enterprises, uh, Atos and uh, Avio Aero, that is uh, responsible for uh, uh, one of the pilots. Uh, we have uh, small medium enterprises, uh, and uh, also we have uh, uh, a good number of, uh, 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 of research organization. Uh, and we have also uh, ACNWF, that is uh, uh, an international organization, also responsible for one of the, uh, the pilots. So um, we have a um, set of objectives that are, uh, let's say, um, um, that cover a broad, uh, the, that the solution we uh, basically we define, we, we devise it, and uh, that uh, can be, let's say, summarized somehow um, with a picture. Uh, as you can see in the, on the right of the slides. Um, and, and this basically these objects are uh, the, the three um, the three I reported here. So we want to uh, provide a foundation co-design for an energy efficient uh, um, cross tech uh, uh, cross tech platform. So, uh, basically, we want to uh, to remove, as I said before, the, the barriers that uh, uh, up to now create the um, HPC, big data, and AI, AI uh, silos, uh, and make the the the, the use of um, their specific tools um, smooth. And this means that we want to. Um, Make easier the the way uh, the, um, the the end user can uh, describe their application, and uh, the the way the the application the um, the the steps that are uh, basically uh, defined in the, the the application itself are binded to the uh, low level, so the infrastructural levels, and in this sense, how we want to make easier and more uh, automatic um, the way this uh, uh, binding happens. Uh, and for doing that, we, um, we thought that uh, we needed to work on the uh, software uh, stack level that is responsible for managing um, uh, the, the execution of such application. Uh, when I talk to, uh, to uh, Managing, I mean, uh, what we call orchestration. So basically all the operation that uh, involves the uh, acquisition of, uh, um, of computing storage networking resources uh, on the underlying infrastructures and how to uh, to to schedule the, the workload um, is inside the, the application um, to this uh, to these uh, resources. Considering the fact that uh, at the infrastructure layer uh, level, you have you may have a, a very uh, different kind of uh, uh, kind of resources. So uh, it can range from a traditional uh, uh, homogeneous system, uh, just using CPUs. Uh, you can have a mixed uh, um, kind of 
computing nodes where you have CPUs, uh, GPUs. Um, some cases you can get access to FPGAs. Um, in some other cases, you can get access to uh, more exotic uh, kind of hardware. So um, talking uh, in a few uh, about neuromorphic uh, uh, investigation we are doing. Um, all these aspects uh, needs to be uh, validated somehow. And of course, we want to, one of the goals is to uh, create uh, the proper use cases and to define the proper use cases uh, that are able to make us um, assessing the, the capability of the system we are uh, we are developing. So we choose uh, these uh, use cases inside the three main domains I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, we want to uh, not only to assess uh, the, um, uh, the, the functioning of the, the system, but we want to uh, make the system ready for being integrated in other uh, infrastructures. So we, we don't want to be um, locked in, uh, uh, in some solution that is uh, fine for us, but not for, for the others. Um, wrapping all these things, uh, uh, there is the uh, energy efficiency um, energy efficiency points. Uh, in this sense, we want to um, make uh, and ensure that the, the, the system we are developing could provide energy efficiency. So provide more performance for the end user, but uh, consume uh, as less as possible. Uh, and for doing that, uh, um, we discovered that one of the, the key is uh, um, the large uh, usage uh, of uh, uh, heterogeneous hardware. So um, in the next uh, couple of slides, I, I will uh, summarize again uh, some of these concepts. So we basically, we um, start from these three main uh, objectives and we derive uh, some technological objectives for the, for the project, um, which are the uh, basis for the uh, work packages, uh, technical work packages we have in the, the project. Uh, one is the, um, of these technological objectives is the hardware software integration co-design. So we, uh, in order to not be locked in uh, some solution that is uh, said before, fine for us, but not for uh, others uh, outside the project, we, um, we, use the um, co-design approach. So we uh, look at which are the uh, constraints and which are the, um, the policies available on uh, the infrastructure we have in the, uh, in the we, have, uh, we can access in the, within the project, but also we, are, we look at, at uh, uh, other uh, potential infrastructure we could uh, access uh, and we try to create a common ground so um, uh, to derive a common set of uh, requirements we should satisfy in order to um, being able to uh, adapt our solution, our stack um, to uh, different infrastructure. So we use this co-design approach and we said yep, um, this approach we um, consider also what are the um, some kind of guidelines coming from the EPI uh, initiatives and uh, other exascale uh, um, project uh, or initiative. Um, we want to create this uh, uh, solution uh, then orbiting more around the, uh, the creation of a software stack that is able to view all these three domains together, uh, I mentioned before. And uh, part of this uh, uh, view is uh, related to basic to the orchestration strategies that we are uh, we are developing and we are trying to uh, embed inside the uh, um, the orchestration architecture. I will show you uh, in a few um, in a while. Um, and one other uh, interesting point is to uh, said before 
to make uh, uh, large use of uh, uh, accelerators. Uh, so how to bind the, uh, the application steps uh, to the proper uh, hardware technology. Uh, and also we needed to, um, to integrate a way of uh, um, letting the, the application performing in situ in transit uh, um, processing, um, which is uh, one of the, uh, the points uh, came out from the, uh, the initial analysis of the ch challenges um, gave out to us by uh, industrial uh, industrial partners. Um, other um, objectives are more related to uh, the pilots themselves. So for the aeronautics, uh, weather and climate and energy carbon sequestration, we um, the, the specific objectives uh, were to uh, basically to improve their uh, state of the art, uh, um, their, state, their state of the art processes or um, uh, application that they have. So for aeronautics, uh, this means to uh, provide an announcement, a strong announcement uh, uh, with respect to the, um, the current uh, design process uh, um, currently in use for uh, uh, designing uh, key aeronautical components. Uh, this means to improve uh, uh, a lot um, uh, complex workflows where uh, they need to, to run uh, several numerical simulation and um, integrate them with uh, uh, um, artificial, basically in a deep neural networks uh, training and inference. Similar things for um, energy carbon sequestration they have um, uh, partners involved in this uh, and working on these specific uh, um, use cases. Uh, they have uh, uh, their um, open source uh, application. Uh, this, is, this application, uh, Opium Flow, basically represents the, um, um, the, the state of the art, uh, but uh, it is not well scaled, uh, at least at the scale of uh, uh, traditional supercomputers. So one of the uh, objective for uh, this, uh, um, this is uh, uh, try to scale um, the, the, the simulation capability in, in this sense. Uh, for weather and climate, uh, the aim was to uh, enable low latency um, uh, HPDA on large data sets. So uh, working on uh, the IoT part, so improving the, the way um, the application can exploit uh, innovative software and hardware technologies for uh, improving uh, IO. Uh, and this sense to reduce as much as possible uh, latencies. Um, Going a little bit more in details for uh, these three uh, uh, pilots uh, um, in the aeronautics, uh, we have uh, uh, basically two main use cases. One is related to uh, the design of uh, combustors, uh, which is part of the um, uh, airplane uh, engines, basically. And uh, another use case uh, is referred to design of a low pressure turbine. Um, in uh, these two, uh, basically in the low pressure turbine um, and the combustor design use case, they have to uh, perform um, um, basically numerical simulation. Uh, and uh, um, basically uh, they have to uh, use the uh, output of this uh, um, is a numerical simulation to cre create um, a data set uh, using uh, basically uh, uh, composed of uh, um, design space parameters used by for designing the, um, the the turbine in the case of the low pressure turbine and uh, use this data set for uh, training uh, um, 
uh, a machine learning models uh, for uh, um, for getting more uh, insight about the uh, best uh, geometric uh, design for the turbine itself. So it's a closed loop, um, which you have basically the um, numerical simulation, um, which uh, fit basically the uh, machine learning models that you need to uh, to train, and then once train it, you use for um, producing uh, with inference space uh, new uh, new inputs for the uh, for closing the loop uh, numerical simulation. Um, they want to improve a lot this process, uh, meaning that they want to be able to perform uh, basically more simulation uh, uh, in the same amount of time, and and also to uh, to train uh, and to explore uh, this design space uh, uh, more quickly. Uh, and this means that uh, they have to improve uh, a lot the way they manage the entire application. Uh, um, this is important because the ambition for them is to uh, reduce as much as possible in future uh, engine the design, um, the emissions and the fuel consumption, and also to make, uh, let's say, the, the product, um, so the, the engine itself or their components uh, more uh, durable. So improving life cycle and so reducing the overall cost uh, related to uh, design, creation, and maintenance of this complex, uh, uh, complex uh, um, mechanical, mechanical systems, basically. Um, and this is a very challenging uh, task for which they want to progress beyond the state of the art, meaning that they want to combine uh, these two main blocks, so numerical simulation uh, and uh, um, machine learning modeling uh, together. Um, similar things for weather and climate, where um, they, uh, SNWF uh, is uh, uh, basically uh, leading uh, the, the uh, the pilot. Uh, here, the the main um, the main challenge was uh, uh, actually is uh, to perform uh, numerical weather um, prediction, so meteorological uh, uh, simulation um, with a, a very high uh, resolution. So um, doing that, it means that uh, basically you produce um, uh, a bunch of data that is uh, uh, very, very large. Um, progress is beyond state of the art for them means to, um, to up to now, to manage uh, more or less uh, uh, 200 terabytes per day of data, um, means uh, produce and basically um, in similar sense, you have to uh, processing this uh, large amount of uh, uh, of data uh, several times uh, per day um, in order to create the, the proper products they uh, deliver to other agencies. Um, and doing that uh, in the next five years, uh, uh, consider that uh, they expect an increasing factor of five, 10 or 10 times um, the amount of data per day they have to produce or in general to, to manage. So uh, 10 times means uh, basically uh, moving from the order of terabytes, uh, hundreds of terabytes to the order of petabytes per day. Uh, and this because they want to, um, to uh, perform simulation using very uh, low spatial resolution that is less uh, than 19, 19 nine kilometers uh, when they consider the simulation cells. Um, and this is more challenging from uh, uh, the point of view of uh, uh, IO uh, and uh, how you manage the, the flow of data 
inside the, the, the system. For energy couple sequestration, as I said before, um, the, here the main concept is to consider um, uh, an open source tool uh, that for uh, sub uh, subsurface reservoir simulations, uh, which is quite good in the sense that uh, at small scale, I mean, for small scale, I mean, uh, um, running simulation uh, that can be afforded to with the uh, um, generally one node uh, on one workstation, so few tens, uh, few tens of uh, cores is fine. But uh, is the really a challenge to move this kind of simulators um, software application to a larger scale? So like um, it is a, a general supercomputer, and uh, doing this means that uh, uh, they have to work on the on the way the, um, the simulation are performed, uh, the way uh, simulation workload is distributed on the available available resources. And uh, it is important to achieve this uh, scale because uh, uh, this is more uh, oriented to perform um, this kind of subsurface reservoir uh, simulation in the context of uh, um, CO2 uh, permanent sequestration applications or uh, um, geothermal production, uh, in the context of uh, hydrology um, applications, all of this uh, can be just performed in a um, meaningful manner if you can scale to um, to, to the uh, to the size of a uh, supercomputer. Um, and this poses a, a, a set of challenges that uh, are in the, in the way you have to manage must leave uh, parallel uh, simulation, um, how to manage uh, in situ in transit uh, uh, analysis, um, how to integrate uh, machine learning uh, or other uh, artificial intelligence tools that could uh, help you to um, to, to boost the, the overall uh, execution, the workflow uh, inside the machine. So uh, by, for example, truncate some simulation that is not uh, uh, useful because you, um, because the system recognized that it's better to uh, consider other runs with other set of param input parameters and so forth, so, so on and so forth. Um, impact expected for the, uh, the project uh, is that uh, uh, for sure we want to organize uh, as in uh, this case um, specific dedicated workshops and training session, um, especially um, showing what we are we, we, we did or well, we can do for the pilot uh, and their specific communities. Um, we are looking at uh, the for sure the, the systems that are uh, coming uh, in the inside uh, the RHPC JU funding. So the new uh, supercomputers um, like the Cineca Leonardo uh, and others, um, as um, the proper um, uh, the proper um, common ground for uh, testing our system at even larger scale than uh, it is possible uh, up to now. Uh, we want to be able to uh, provide kind of uh, um, kind of uh, uh, guidelines or uh, uh, starting the, uh, the the path towards the integration of more exotic uh, um, more exotic uh, solution like uh, neuromorphic uh, processing. Uh, which are um, considered uh, more promising for uh, uh, for getting and uh, fulfilling the uh, main objective of being energy efficient uh, and at the same time providing more flexibility for uh, machine learning, uh, deep learning application. Uh, we expect to have uh, our solution uh, um, uh, well ready 
uh, next year, uh, around middle of next year. Um, and we are also um, looking uh, looking at uh, other stakeholders outside the, the project that could be uh, interested in uh, uh, somehow test uh, our stack solution um, in the future. Um, this was my uh, first part of the talk. Um, given that uh, uh, big picture, the, the project, uh, well, I hope to uh, it's fine for you. Uh, I will go through the um, technological aspects uh, um, in, uh, right now. Um, from the technological point of view, um, I, um, I want to start from uh, uh, well, from the requirements, system requirements and pilot requirements uh, uh, from a, a more technical perspective. Uh, requirements from which uh, uh, we started for uh, uh, creating uh, um, the, the solution we uh, I will present in a, in a while. Um, and uh, uh, considering all the pilots uh, and use case we have in the project, basically, um, we found that uh, uh, common uh, request uh, for for uh, the the stack we uh, we were going to uh, to design was to being able to co scheduling HPC jobs, uh, meaning that uh, uh, we wanted to be able to have one job uh, scheduled on um, a set of resources and letting this job um, triggering some events that uh, could uh, uh, trigger, uh, uh, which in turn could trigger the, um, the execution or well, the, the submission and execution of other jobs in the system. Uh, we wanted to uh, have a solution able to uh, let the user to um, define co-location of jobs Meaning that uh, um, since we you may uh, you may work on machines that are heterogeneous, um, you may also want to have one job using a, a portion of each node. For example, just the um, CPUs you have in the in a uh, node equipped with GPUs, and another job scheduled uh, on that. Uh, um, on that uh, uh, notes using the, the remaining part. So as you can see in the two picture um, in the slides, on the left, you have uh, the idea of uh, uh, school scheduling. On the right, you have the idea of uh, uh, co-location. So having two different jobs, um, basically um, taking over the a fraction of the resources of the which node. And for doing that, we needed uh, to find a way of uh, uh, supporting resource allocation with a very fine granularity. I mean, um, something that is maybe achievable uh, just using a, a batch scheduling, a, a state of the art uh, batch scheduler, but um, with a very, very complex um configuration of the system and uh, something that up to now can be achievable if the uh, system administrator uh, provide a configuration for doing that uh, we wanted to move over this situation try to find a solution that allows the user uh, and the system um, administrator to allow doing that without impacting on uh, uh, the other, let's say, policies uh, that were in place, uh, already in place in, uh, on the system. Um, we had two, basically two different approaches uh, we uh, consider for, for doing that. One is uh, basically the idea of uh, um, uh, letting our uh, software stack, so our orchestrator to uh, to launch what we call the uh, large eating jobs. So uh, basically a job that uh, um, 
is uh, uh, which uh, whose basically whose uh, purpose is just to that of taking um, the the proper set of uh, resources on the system, and uh, then use some specific uh, uh, software solution for uh, scheduling for scheduling inside uh, uh, this uh, large heading job um, MPI task uh, uh, that should appear like uh, uh, to uh, the application to separated uh, uh, MPI jobs. Um, so co-scheduling and uh, in this uh, case, uh, also co-locating um, uh, feature uh, could be enabled. Uh, the other solution is uh, uh, leveraging on uh, advanced reservation. Um, so um, let the system to uh, reserve in advance um, uh, the proper set of uh, resources and then um, let the, the, the software stack to uh, schedule the execution of jobs uh, on this reservation. All these uh, uh, two mechanisms uh, basically should provide us uh, uh, more control and more determinism on the execution of the, uh, of the entire application. So uh, allowing us to achieve another uh, interesting uh, goal that is that of uh, providing uh, um, an, improvement, an improvement over the um, make time, uh, make span uh, for the application. Um, the idea for doing that is uh, using, uh, uh, in our case, a uh, specific uh, tools that I also uh, present in more detail um, in a few slides. Um, it's called Hypercube. Basically, Hypercube is a um, sim a system based on a, a server workers architecture that allows us to um, to 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 schedule workload. Uh, inside the uh, a set of resources we, um, we, we acquired with uh, the finer granularity I mentioned before. Um, and uh, we need to uh, consider Hypercube uh, capable, capable of uh, doing that, uh, considering also uh, MPI, uh, MPI uh, tasks. So basically the idea is to create uh, two different MPI ranks on, uh, uh, inside the same nodes and uh, partitioning uh, the, the use of these MPI ranks um, uh, between, uh, different, uh, between different tasks. Um, as I said before, we can even achieve this through Slurm or PBS, or, uh, um, which are the two main um, batch schedulers uh, we um, can access in, uh, within, the, uh, within the, the project but it's not very user-friendly. So we need to, for uh, doing that, uh, the help of the, the administrator and uh, sometimes, well, often this uh, um, uh, could break the, 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 the policies that uh, uh, um, HPC administrators uh, already set up on the, on the machine. Um, our solution could provide a benefit in this sense because it uh, avoids this. So we can uh, keep uh, um, ready in place policies. Uh, we can, can uh, keep all the uh, priorities for accessing the queues in the system uh, as they are, uh, but we can provide uh, more uh, flexibility and we can provide uh, to our system uh, access uh, um, to resources in a more deterministic way. Uh, the overall picture we uh, devised for the orchestrator is uh, the one you can see here. So we have a, a, a set of uh, uh, components um, that are uh, basically um, providing the, the feature uh, needed for uh, uh, acquiring resources. So basically the work module that is uh, the one uh, responsible for uh, getting uh, uh, resources on the HPC side, stream flow that is the, our main uh, 
uh, execution uh, engine for the workflow. Hyper-Q, as I mentioned before, is the one, the module responsible for um, fine grain control over the acquired resources. And then we have uh, um, a solution um, that is called uh, Istia. Uh, that is our main cloud uh, resource deployer, uh, which is coupled with FMRE, uh, that is the module responsible for uh, managing that mod the modeling of uh, uh, deep learning uh, and machine learning uh, models. Uh, so managing their training and uh, the inference phase. Um, Warp is um, the, the module that also provides basically the, the, the interface for, to the user. So the user will provide a description of the application in terms of uh, um, a DAG or uh, more general uh, yeah, yeah. graph, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. coupled yeah, yeah. with uh, a description of the uh, environment, execution environment. Uh, required by each step of the of the application. Um, Streamflow, as I said before, is uh, the main uh, execution engine for the workflows. Uh, it provides also the feature for describing, uh, so for modeling the, the workflows uh, as graphs. Um, it is based on uh, the CWL standard, um, which provides a, a standardized way for uh, um, describing your uh, application workflow. But this is uh, uh, coupled with uh, um, other two, um, other two, um, basically two files. Uh, one describing the environment uh, needed to execute uh, each step of the workflow and uh, one uh, providing the binding between uh, the workflow step and the uh, uh, execution environment. Um, the second module uh, as I said before is uh, the warp. Uh, it provides basically the on-demand capability for reserving uh, HPC resources. So um, it is uh, interacting with the, the batch scheduler and it is backed up um, back by uh, SQL database for uh, uh, keeping track of uh, all the um, submitted workflows and uh, all the uh, operations that are, uh, uh, are occurring in the system. HyperQ, as I said before, uh, provides fine-grained control over the computer resources. So um, I said before, it's a server workers architecture. Um, providing management of the resources with a granularity lower than uh, uh, than a single node, so uh, it allows you to uh, also to launch and execute tasks um, you know, on a subset of the uh, of the cores available on the nodes, or just using um, using some accelerator if available on the on the system. And it is also able to uh, play with uh, virtualized resources if you have uh, cloud partitions. Um, FMLE and Istia uh, are those tools uh, used for uh, uh, for managing uh, cloud and uh, um, and uh, uh, managing the machine learning deep learning modeling. Uh, I will give you uh, a little bit more details of this two uh, in the next slides. Um, here I just uh, um, summarize some some feature of the um, of the uh, Streamflow. Um, Streamflow basically it's a uh, born uh, as a um, Multi uh, a system able to execute tasks on multi uh, container environments. So actually, it's not uh, um, uh, not uh, locked in uh, to just using containers. So it can uh, support uh, um, access to uh, HPC resources to uh, SSH or uh, uh, interacting directly with uh, uh, batch scheduler. Um, 
in the project we extended the capability of uh, interacting uh, with um, other uh, environments so including uh, uh, hypercube um, basically it provides uh, the capability of uh, um, modeling uh, workflow uh, here called the hybrid in the sense that uh, each step of the workflow can uh, span uh, different uh, heterogeneous and dependent computing infrastructure or um, uh, no sense uh, computing resources. Um, and it takes uh, care about the different methods and protocols uh, needed for uh, uh, managing with this, uh, these different uh, uh, environments. Um, and here is the picture um, which provide you probably more clearly uh, the way Streamflow works. So basically, you describe, as I said before, your uh, application um, as a, a CWL uh, file. So you have you know, described your basically your graph. So how the each step uh, of the application uh, connects to the others. Uh, so this is the step, the, uh, the point, uh, point one. Point two on the right of the picture um, is concerned the description of the uh, execution environments you, uh, you, you need for uh, executing each step. So each, uh, um, uh, each uh, um, bubble of the, on the uh, graph on the left. And uh, there is a third file, uh, step, step three, that provides you the, um, basically the binding between uh, the steps and the environment. So as you can see in the, in the middle uh, top part of the, of the schema, um, you have the, the, the graph uh, of your application. Um, and in yellow, or in orange, you have uh, highlighted the steps that uh, use two different uh, uh, execution environments. Um, Streamflow is a, a modular architecture, so it can be extended as we did for uh, supporting uh, uh, Hypercube. Uh, while for uh, uh, providing uh, um, reservations, so providing more deterministic uh, way of accessing resources, we set up uh, basically um, a plugin of Slurm. So we started to considering uh, Slurm as a target. So here I just uh, summarized a, a bit how the um, uh, Slurm architecture uh, is. So you have uh, basically different commands. On the client side, you have uh, two main, uh, basically two main uh, um, demos uh, managing the, the the resources and taking control of the, the scheduling. And we basically we played with all these uh, things to uh, create something that is not uh, um, yet available, uh, at least for uh, as far as uh, we know. Uh, that is mm, summarized here, basically. So the idea is that uh, um, you describe uh, uh, reservation, so uh, on-demand reservation, uh, more or less exactly as you um, should um, should describe uh, a standard HPC job submitted uh, on a standard uh, queue system. Uh, so you provide the um, number of uh, resources you need uh, uh, the, for how much time you need the reservation, when it should uh, should start uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, we used uh, the Spank uh, plugin for uh, uh, providing a, a specific uh, flag uh, option uh, at the CLI uh, level for uh, enabling uh, reservation. And the idea is that uh, basically you uh, you start submitting actually a job with the same uh, feature uh, as you expect for your uh, reservation on the system. Um, but you, uh, you um, leverage on the test on the option that uh, just enforced the uh, batch scheduler to test if the job could 
be executed on the system. And uh, uh, once the uh, request of uh, submission uh, reached the, um, uh, the internal plugin that is uh, on the right of the scheme, um, uh, inside the uh, purple, uh, purple square, uh, you actually substitute the, the job submission with the um, uh, reservation uh, request. So you, um, you uh, return uh, a response to the system and the uh, reservation uh, uh, has been done. So basically, uh, we found this solution providing a, a control without uh, uh, requiring to, uh, to um, restructuring um a lot the the slurm uh slurm um code uh a lot so uh easily you can achieve also on demand reservation so uh reservation can be done by user uh, without uh, any uh, spe special uh special rights on the system uh, and this allow us to uh, achieve uh, um, determinism on the execution, so reducing basically the um, uh, overall max span time for the execution of uh, uh, application workloads, uh, and uh, um, allows us to uh, also to improve over the energy efficiency. Uh, the other point we are um, investigating is to support neuromorphic computing and also to integrate this uh, inside the uh, orchestration uh, um, system. So basically, um, we uh, what we intend to do is to uh, integrate a pipeline, kind of pipeline managed by uh, FastMLE uh, and DSTIA. That allows to transform automatically a generic, generic um, artificial neural network that should be then uh, converted to a TensorFlow-like model into a spiking neural network. And then we are also investigating how to run this uh, uh, spiking neural network model um, on a, a emulated neuromorphic hardware. So we used FPGA for, for that. And in this sense, the, we are also tuning the orchestration system to uh, be aware of the, the nodes that, uh, um, that have an FPGA. Uh, in this sense, we are um, considering, we, we have considered different uh, uh, target for the other part. And the most promising is uh, open source uh, uh, project. We, uh, it's called uh, Rank. Uh, which basically replicates uh, the IBM Tree North uh, architecture, or well, a uh, similar one. Um, for that, we uh, we had a, a very long model uh, that is com com that compiles and can be synthesized on uh, uh, FPGA. Um, it supports also basically uh, TensorFlow models uh, in input. So we are looking more on this uh, side, on this uh, guy for uh, providing the, um, the, the hardware, uh, the hardware layer for the testing with a uh, spiking neural network. Um, there are other, um, other solution we, uh, we consider, but uh, uh, they have uh, less, uh, um, they appear to us uh, less mature than uh, the rank. Uh, on the side of uh, uh, on the software side, uh, we consider at least two these two um, toolbox. So on one side, Nango that is also uh, that, is, that comes also with a, an accelerated version running on FPGA. Um, so we are trying to combine the, this uh, framework with the. Um, the, the execution on the on the rank, uh, and also the spiking neural network conversion toolbox, uh, which support a, a lot of uh, uh, backends, and which are trying to uh, we are trying to in fact to uh, to 
to port on the on the rank architecture so how idea uh let me say uh coming here to this mm, this schema is to uh make the user uh, uh able to define and insert in their application um as a target uh, execution environment uh, for example for stream flow um the fpga emulator and uh, let the the system to take the uh, take care about the uh, transformation of the inn model into tensorflow and in, uh, into into the snm equivalent model and to uh, run it on the on the proper uh, the proper hardware um given that just let me uh, conclude and uh, let you uh, give me some uh, question if you want um we are uh we are uh at the next uh, supercomputing uh, 2022 so uh if you want and if you uh will attend the, the conference uh please visit us at the boot uh, uh 4304 uh we have a boot of the project co-located with the c project so you can uh, uh have more uh more details or if you want we can uh, uh share more uh, things uh or find a uh, way of collaborating uh especially if you attend uh, the conference so thanks for the attention uh i don't know if there are questions maybe you can raise your hand uh i will uh Any questions, information you want from the projects? Okay, um, I think there is no question from the, the audience, uh, or maybe yes, one question. Um, thank you for, uh, uh, I, I tried to, to be uh, as clear as possible, sorry for, again, for the initial uh, issue with the, the connection. Um, I think that, uh, uh, yes, somehow uh, we'll, we could uh, share the the slides. I guess also the uh, there are uh, no uh, problem about that. We recorded the um, uh, the presentation, so uh, we we made available uh, publicly if you want. Um, so uh, I guess um, I guess yes. Uh, any other questions? If not, I think we can uh, uh, close this webinar. So thanks again for, uh, for everyone to, to attend it. And uh, hopefully see you on uh, in Dallas or uh, uh, in the future, uh, maybe around uh, some conference uh, uh, for uh, maybe for having uh, the chance for uh, uh, collaborating. Thanks again to everybody.